Good day everyone. Today we have a new product release for the Chrysler 8.4 inch Uconnect 4C panel. This is uh, used in many automotive systems 2017 and up. Chrysler, Jeep, Ram truck, Dodge, many many vehicles use this and it's the infotainment central system which controls your vehicle settings, AC, navigation, pretty much everything. And these systems are very unreliable in terms of uh, failures. They, they delaminate, the bubbling happens at the very top where you can kind of see a peeling or, or water bubble that kind of spreads over time, which leads to unresponsiveness or frozen touch. Sometimes the anti-glare coating gets scratched up or fades away and looks bad. Here's kind of the classic bubble that happens in the corner and spreads. And if you search online, you'll see it's not rare. It is very, very common that these things are failing and uh, because they were used in so many vehicles. And what happens is this glue that you see here, it's like a watery liquid glue that separates over time after just two to three years and leaves you with a, with a system that's broken. So the dealer will say you have to replace the radio. Very expensive, always back ordered. Today we're gonna to talk about installing the new LCD and digitizer combo, much cheaper, or you can replace the glass only uh, for even less money, but it's messy and generally not recommended. So let's start off with looking at the new panel and what that includes. So this panel is the LCD bonded to the touch digitizer panel with an improved design. It's a high definition glass. It's not gonna scratch. It is a very sharp image. Also, it has the integrated OE connectors on the back, so everything fits perfectly. Brand new LCD panel, and it has an anti-glare layer for improved viewing in, in sunlight. And also, it's not gonna fail like your factory screens or the dealer replacement, it's an improved design. It comes shipped to you in a special packaging to protect it from static and, and shock. Each unit is tested fully to make sure you'd only have to do the job once uh, without having to deal with returns or, or questions or callbacks. Very simple installation. This was designed over three years of engineering and testing to find an appropriate solution. And just like anything, you'll find many replicas online. The way to get the right product is qscreens.com on the shop page. We've gone through many iterations and many of those have been copied, of course, um, by others. So we've got 10,000 units out in, in the market. To replace it, it's very simple. We'll show you here. It's a Phillips head screwdriver, a blue nylon pry tool, and the panel, of course, qscreens.com for that one. Let's get started here and take a look at, at how, to, um, how to install this. So once your radio is out of your car, the first step is going to be kind of analyzing this and, and we can see there's a bubble on the very corner. Very, very common. I think pretty much every vehicle has experienced this. So we'll take the new panel out of the packaging. Notice that there's no bubble here. It looks like new, ready for installation with the original connection. So, all right, so to start this job off, all we have to do is take the blue nylon pry tool, insert it between the black metal frame and the silver metal housing. All we're doing here is releasing the eight metal tabs, two on each side. Just kind of gently lift that thin sheet metal up so it disengages from the latch. We use the nylon uh, pry tool because in case the, the tool slips, we don't want to scratch anything or damage any of the cables. So that's why it's always better to use a, a less abrasive tool than other people who might use like a, a screwdriver or a, a putty knife or a butter knife or something to that effect. Um, it's just a little bit safer and prevents damage. Continue working your way around there until all of the eight metal tabs are disengaged and results in kind of a loose metal frame as you see there. Don't pull it off just yet. Some vehicles that have ex uh, extensive leaking of the glue will have the glue everywhere, so that might kind of hang up a little bit, like, like on this unit in this video. So be aware of that. Don't apply too much force because this black metal frame does have a wire holding it to the metal chassis. So we don't want to rip that wire. That could cause damage. So once all the tabs are loose and free, just kind of gently pull it away from the metal housing. Just 
Just kind of keep going around it and working it to make sure that everything's disconnected and unlatched. And when it's fully free like that, you can, it's really just held in place with the, um, whatever residue of the glue that might still remain. That's all that's holding it now. So So very gently here, just lift it away. We'll start to see that glue, that very sticky glue, um, hold it in place there. You can see the black wire. We do not want to break that wire. So once the glue kind of separates and you can kind of cut it there, we can lift that frame up, kind of set it aside. Don't put too much stress or force on it to prevent cutting. Set it face down just like you see here. The next step is crucial. It's removing six of the Phillips head screws that hold the, the circuitry to the LCD housing. Standard Phillips head number two screwdriver will do the job. Very important not to lift up on anything after you remove the screws. And we'll explain why here in a moment, but the, this step now is just remove the screws and set the screws aside. They're all the same, all the same length, so you don't need to keep track of anything. Now we want to flip the unit over, but it's very important to tightly grip both the top and the bottom metal pieces together. Don't, don't pull them apart. Just like in the video, keep a tight grip on it, flip it back over so it's LCD face up. Very important, otherwise the unit will come loose. There's a bunch of spacers and other stuff that could come loose. Just avoid that, hold the unit together when you flip it. So now we'll lift up on the LCD, disconnect the ribbon cables that are held down with just these black latches. Simply lift up on them, they pivot 90 degrees and the ribbon cable will come out. Lift it out of its housing. Obviously don't put too much stress on the ribbon cable. And now the old LCD panel is out and free. So we will set this aside. We want to transfer over the display ribbon cable to the new panel. We're gonna insert the cable into the new panel, the ribbon cable into the new panel here. And this is an important step because you wanna make sure it gets in properly. You'll notice there's two little hooks, two little um, tabs on the end of this ribbon cable that hold the connector in place. That's how you can tell if it's lined up properly. You can see those hooks kind of go into the connector and we'll get a better, a better view up close here in a second. We want to make sure it's lined up and the alignment tabs are appropriate before locking that connector down. So we want to see that the white alignment all the way across. You want those two hooks to be latched in. Once that's good, you can go ahead and lock it down and you'll be all set on that section. The nice thing here is all of the ribbon cables are the exact same style. So if you know how to do one, you know how to do all of them. Now we'll gently lay down the LCD panel. Make sure your ribbon cable connectors are unlocked, pointed upwards, vertical, 90 degrees, just like you see here and we're going to connect both ribbon cables. Just like before, make sure those little hooks, those tabs get inserted into the connector. Kind of angle it downwards under the pins, lock it down just like that. Make sure your white stripes are lined up properly and then simply press down to clip it into place. And then gently set the LCD panel back in the case. Just like that. Now you can remove the protective film. From this point on, be very careful not to scratch the LCD panel. Put that metal frame back over the panel temporarily. Just kind of get it to hold it in place there. Tight, again, tightly grip the bottom of the metal unit. 
keep it tight together when you flip it back over just like that. You don't want that back half with the connectors to come loose. So when it's, once it's face down like this, these Phillips head screws are gonna go back in. Try not to over tighten these. They don't need to be in really tight. Maybe tighten them evenly would, would help. Go in like a star pattern or whatnot, just kind of alternate. Just tighten those up until it's secure. All right, with all six screws tightened securely, you can flip it back over now. And now we're going to lock down those metal latch tabs that we unlocked at the first step. And this is very simple. Use your metal finger or metal um, pry tool to just press those latches back down so it engages. It's very thin sheet metal, so it should bend easily. All right, with the metal frame installed, that is it. That's all that has to be done. Now you can plug this back in. There's no programming, no calibration, nothing. It should all work perfectly fine. Order that panel at qscreens.com on the shop page. YouTube subscribers can use the promo code CHAT5 to save even more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.